What's up, rock stars? Today we're gonna be talking about the top 10 things you guys are most interested in. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. Now this is a brand new series, so if you have any suggestions at all, please leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, even if you think you just wanna see this every month, or if you find a way that, oh, maybe could improve this way, or you really liked this part of it, do let me know. What we're gonna be doing is talking about the top 10 things in the last month that you guys have been looking into, so the top 10 hot items, and then also the top three videos of mine and what I think, why they kind of were driven to the views that they were, so we can kind of talk about what made them big. So we're gonna have a top 10 and then a top three at the end. We're going in reverse order, so starting at 10, getting to number one, and then starting at three, getting to number one. With, without further ado, let's go and dive in. The only thing I'm gonna say is that I got this actually from YouTube, it lets me know now what you guys are actually searching for. So so uh, be careful. No, it's it's a very aggregate, you know, from the top. So I <laughs> I doubt I doubt anything weird's gonna come up. But I guess we'll see. We'll see how this this goes. So I'll be doing this once a month. Once a month. So uh, in a, in, uh, in another month, you'll see another one. Okay, starting out number ten. Everdale board game. Now this is interesting because I'm looking at this and you guys will let me know, you know, hey, I searched for this or hey, this is why this is big because sometimes I want to try and know, sometimes I might not know. You guys will have to let me know. I am not sure why Everdale is so big right now. I see that there is a brand new unboxing of the complete collection and maybe the complete collection something new. That was five days ago by Felicia here. No commentary in the unboxing, which is very fascinating, by the way, an interesting take on it. Um, I, I I, the opposite, right? I do way too much commentary, so that's kind of cool. But otherwise, you know, we get three years ago, four years ago, two years ago, three years ago. There was two days ago, the complete collection. So that's what I'm thinking it is, is there was this complete collection, this kind of new thing that kind of wraps it all up and you guys are interested in it. Or maybe you and the 42,000 other people are still interested in why it's better than Wingspan, in which case Alex can let you know about that. Certainly not me, I've not played either. Uh, but yeah, uh, is this just a new version? Is there anything new in this version? I don't know, you guys will have to let me know. This is number 10. Number nine is Hero Quest. Now this is big, of course. Of course, why Hero Quest is so great is number one. That should be anything that has broadsword in it needs to be up here. Uh, and this one certainly has that because the best thing about Hero Quest is the why Hero Quest is so great video, as we all know. Uh, this is actually probably closer to this one. Now, I can't read half the words this guy puts in his thing, like RPG, IAB, update, plus more delay, uh, mine, schwa. I have no idea what the heck all that is. However, however, what he's showing here is there is a new expansion on Hero Pulse, and it's Hero Pulse exclusive as far as I can tell. I'm going to be looking into it more. I will have a news update for you guys on that, but there is more Hero Quest. We had already uh, heard about this one, the Frozen Horror, so that's been new, but this is something different. It's like Annihilation or... Uh, something like that, I believe. So uh, we'll we'll look into that. Of course, I think that's why it's up there. It's not just it delivering and stuff like that, right? You got like the whole, hey, you know, here's the two different versions. It's very much uh, there's more stuff coming suddenly. I think that's why you guys are Googling it or YouTubing it or whatever you want to refer to it as. Next up, we have War of the Ring. Twofold, I think. This is number eight. War of the Ring, obviously quite popular. That 1.6 million from Shut Up and Sit Down. This has been, I mean, it's it's four years old. It's been around for forever. Dune just recently was launched by um, Dune War of Arrakis by Kaman, and it takes War of the Ring, takes two of the three designers, and makes it for Dune. So it's very much a, 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 a different flavor. I wouldn't even say 2.0, a different flavor of the War of the Ring formula. 
So I think that drove a lot of interest. Also, of course, the Amazon series is live right now. And while it's not called War of the Ring, it is kind of similar to that. And I might have people looking into Lord of the Ring board games, stuff like that. They get to War of the Ring, they hear about that. And I think that's where a lot of that driving is. Let me know if you guys bought War of the Ring recently. If the Dune being on offer got you into it or, or, or what. I've always thought it like a really cool game. Like ever since I first got into board gaming, this has been a, a thing I've been looking at. Anyway, that is number eight. Number seven is Root, the board game. Root is fascinating to me because Root, first of all, is has been popular for a long time now, right? I mean, like it, it really has. It, it just, it, it, it kind of, I don't know, I didn't feel like it made that big of a splash, but it's just kept its player base or even grown it, I would argue. Um, people love it. And love it so much that, look at this, look at this, a root, a buyer's guide. You need a buyer's guide when you have that much. That looks like a command delivery. That looks like a Steamforge Games delivery, minus Bard's Song, but like, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn and stuff like that. Like, that's a lot of expansion. That's a big pile of boxes, um, which is wild to me. Uh, I think it's cool. I love it. I love that people are playing games like root. I think that's great. Um, I like the cutesy, artsy, you know, stuff. Um, but I don't know if there's something new that came out of Root. So I'm not sure if it's just a general people love Root and they're always Googling it. It seems like Root just never goes away. I believe uh, Quackalope actually uh, consistently has Root content on his channel for the people who are constantly playing Root because that's a group. So if that's you, let me know. Let me know what keeps drawing you into that. I would love to hear. I've not played it. But I've been tempted to. Uh, Game Brigade, I've been at his place and he has it. And I, I, I was tempted to play it once, but he doesn't let me pick games to play because he wants me to play games like Dune Imperium and junk like that. Moving on. Okay, so we have had 10, 9, 8, 7. We're on number 6. Number 6, Marvel Crisis Protocol. I, twofold. There's always releasing new stuff. And again, it's a player base. There's always people playing Marvel Crisis Protocol. By the way, this cable here on this thumbnail fan freaking tastic cable is such a cool character anyway i've always liked cable but the whole like force field thing freaking sweet that looks awesome one well, great painted too um so yeah you're just always going to see content for uh for crisis protocol it's just always a thing i've been wanting to get into it the one reason i haven't is first of all yet another game system right i mean so i've, I've been playing darkest dungeon as you guys can see but you know i have infinity and i have warhammer and have all this other stuff that i'm trying to do in all the board games so i don't know if i can i don't know it's hard plus the core box has some of the most boring and uninspired minis out of the whole set you do not get these super cool cable ones in the core so i'm almost tempted to like just buy some of the cooler mini expansions and not even have the game i don't know i don't know uh that that seems wasteful to me though because i also want to play the game too uh so yeah haven't bought into it yet i'm probably just waiting for a good sale uh if you guys ever see the core box on a really good sale let me know for sure i'd be interested in that nine eight seven six kaylin edit this part out Ten nine eight. So I lose track. Ten nine eight seven six. All right, now we're gonna move on to number five. Number five is terraforming Mars. Okay, so two points. First of all, people love terraforming Mars. It's constantly played. Blah blah blah. But it also has a dice game that's on Kickstarter right now, and I imagine that drives a lot of people looking into terraforming Mars. I think it's kind of like the hero quest thing, where it's like, or the Dune uh, versus War of the Ring kind of thing, right? It's like if there's something on available, you guys are looking into it. Now it's interesting that this actually made it so high because the dice game is it's doing well. I think there's like six thousand plus backers, but I, I was surprised to see it this high. But it could just be that a lot of you guys are just googling terraforming Mars, maybe to get refreshed on it maybe seeing it and then opting out of the dice game maybe you, it got you into the dice game or maybe it's just people constantly still googling it i don't know it's kind of interesting this is based off of you guys by the way so all of my viewers not even just subscribers but viewers so if you guys are here watching even if you're not subscribed um you, you're included in all of this in some way uh and let me know let me know if if like how many of these you you've gotten hit i'd be interested okay number four is iss vanguard obviously it's delivering people are starting to play it people are excited about it you're wanting to see these reviews from four days ago or this playthrough from nine days ago or even a how to play from three weeks ago uh all of this stuff notice all of this is new as people get their game and are starting to enjoy it from what i hear it's a lot of fun but i uh the, at least some of my patrons there are playing it solo 
because they felt it was kind of too much to kind of do in a group and took away from it and they much more appreciate it as a solo game which i think makes sense too that was kind of my apprehension against it right as i don't play solo and i didn't see the 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 real good uh draw of playing with multiple people so i think this is very much a uh, um uh, a solo experience preferred at least from what i can tell from what i'm hearing you guys let me know what your thoughts are on that or what maybe what other reviewers are saying i'd love to hear uh their thoughts on that okay number three star wars legion again constantly making new stuff very popular i didn't realize so many of you guys play legion i'm assuming you guys play it i have always wanted to of course um i'm a huge huge star wars fan i always have been um it it, it just well okay so pre pre disney I've, I've been a big star wars fan i should say i grew up watching the originals on vhs uh for i mean just i i i burned through those vhs so then when the special edition came out i was all about that and i was watching that and i loved it i didn't care you know people were a little boohoo whatever i had a blast i got, I got the, that i've bought star wars on vhs twice dvd blu-ray twice because then he had like the ultimate collection. It would, he George Lucas figured out how to make me buy the game or the the videos like multiple times. I have no idea. So of course, when I see a big you know chicken walker that's gonna be you know shooting around everything, I'm like, that's a freaking cool mini. Or you can run around in your tauntauns and do all this kind of crazy stuff. I've always been interested in this too, by the way. The like 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 let's get a tauntaun versus grievous or something like that. Like like these kind of weird amalgamations of time that don't make sense i don't know if you can necessarily do that or not in the game i'm assuming you can anyway it looks super cool gen con they had a lot of cool stuff as well let me know what's coming out though i mean obviously this stuff is all new right as people keep doing stuff but um well, like what sets are coming out what, what what are they doing now because the problem with ip games is eventually you run out of ip and then you start doing like super deep dives or multiple versions i wanted to see this during marvel crisis protocol as well because i believe they have like three or four versions of spider-man now right i mean like you, you kind of start doing like oh this is the same version but slightly different this is a different setup here this is some weird deep cut or whatever where are they at with the ip on that I, I've, I've always kind of wondered how that works when the the ip runs out and you still want to use it all right number two is slap chop now this threw me for a loop but it's super cool guys super cool so I, i'm like slap chop why are people googling slap chop and sure enough it's the slap chop commercials the first thing that comes up but it's right down here it's this here it's this here this here all this stuff here right this is the main stuff here what is slap chop actually super cool it's a painting technique that's kind of uh, gone by storm lately that everybody's kind of going on the slap chop paint thing it's supposed to be able to get your minis painted quick and then what what was cool i watched ninjons here because again i, I did my research for you guys on a little bit of this uh when i didn't know what the heck it was uh and, and ninjon did a, a 2.0 essentially it adds a little bit of time but you can do it anytime so this first one here is it essentially black primer a light gray the uh, uh highlight so kind of from the top and then you just uh get a white and you dry brush everything you just dry brush it all and then you uh well like all the all the raised edges of course right and then you just put contrast paste on all of it and that's it that's a slap chop it's a way to paint minis and minutes like like 15 minutes right and get it quite decent it's all contrast but with that kind of extra bit on top it actually is a trick i've used before when i used washes because it was pre-contrast I used it in a few of my videos for uh, object source lighting. It's one of my favorite ways to object source light. Um, so what you do is you drive the highlights up where you want it to glow or want the, the light to be emitted really, really high. Uh, in fact, all the way up to white if you want. And then you get your wash and you put your wash over that area. So it works best on darker areas. So like if you have like a dark purple robe and you bring those out, but those highlights will get tinted very, very strongly. And then it dissipates less on the darker. And so anytime you have that, that's a super easy way to do all this. It, it, it's almost foolproof and it works really really well i very much uh, uh liked doing highlighting that way this is pretty much doing the whole mini that way which is i think kind of cool especially possible with contrast paints uh so it's a way to kind of do that what ninjon did here with 2.0 is then went and did some edge highlighting but what he said is even though it adds some time even if time is your biggest thing this doesn't hold you back because your miniatures all fully painted like all parts of it are fully painted before you do this step so you can 
still play your game with a fully painted thing as you do this extra step. And as you can see, a little bit more time and it does look a lot better, that is for sure. But anyway, that's Slap Chop, super cool. So there you go, I just told you kind of the basics. Feel free to Google it as well or YouTube it or whatever and uh, take a look at <laughs> specifically what's going on with some of these searches. Um, feel free to take a look at, uh, at, at, at some of these videos and see see how to do it. All right, and then number one, Leagues of Voltan. Look, Warhammer 40K is always the top, and because I cover miniature games, and because I like Warhammer and stuff like that, a lot of you guys do too, and so a lot of you guys are searching about, oh my gosh, Space Dwarves. Ah, Space Dwarves. Um, hot take, I don't like the look of them that much. Um, I actually like the look of them, uh, the people. Uh, their armor, I don't really like. It's very bubbly, very smooth. It's, I don't know, it, it's like... I don't know. It's, it doesn't excite me, which is which is a bummer because I like them otherwise. But uh, their armor is not for me. Like 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 this this right there, that would have been sweet if it, they all look like that art. But they all kind of look bulbousy like this, um, which I don't know. It just doesn't doesn't do it for me. I guess it's money saved. I'll just keep doing my. Um, my uh my other armies and i'll be i'll be good there okay so that is actually the number one that's that's the 10 things you guys have been looking into the most now let's talk about some of the videos i've done and the top three on here and why they were so big here's probably the really hot items you're waiting for number three this is terrible this was with chip theory games and their disaster with east star which again i i mean this is not the first time east star has cost a company a ton of money and a ton of bad publicity and i'm very surprised people continue to use them they're not the best quality at all in what they do so they're you're not certainly not paying for the best you can get uh as far as miniatures are concerned at least uh, which again doesn't affect chip theory games at all, right? They 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 have their little their little uh, discs, and then they have the neoprene mats, and they're good to go. So, um, what happened here was E Star decided to, I guess, like not verify what they're doing and made ten thousand copies incorrectly. And so now they have to go and fix them. But because it's 10,000, and as you can see here, 5,286 backers actually backed it, which means they did extra for retail, they will not have these copies for retail during the holiday season, losing their estimate hundreds of thousands of sales that they would have had, like money, uh, income, revenue that they would have had. So uh, that really, really sucks. And uh, my heart goes out to them. I can't imagine what a bad day that was in the office. That's just heartbreaking. Uh, so E-Star is paying for the fix according to them, but they're trying to, you know, push it, you know, to be done quicker, obviously, and seeing what happens there. It just sucks. So the other time I covered E-Star messing up was the Melted Soldier and Nemesis from Awakened Realms, that was actually E-Star as well. E-Star does all their manufacturing for Awakened Realms. So when you got that melted soldier and they sent it out to thousands of people and they had to send it out later on, all that, all that was E-Star's fault also. So uh, yeah, just uh, I'm tired of doing these videos where I'm like, E-Star goofed up again. It, it, it really frustrates me. And I, you don't really see this in the other ones nearly as much. So uh, at least not that I've covered anyway, but yeah, so that that sucks. And obviously, that's a big one. Chip Theory Games is a very popular company. Uh, they have a lot of fans, and they, uh, people who um, buy their games are very happy with the product that they get. So obviously, hearing that they got hit with such a huge financial hit uh, through this is just really, really crappy. And I imagine drove a lot of you guys to uh, to. To, to, to view this and find out what's going on with Chip Theory Games. All right, and the number two we have, Awakened Realms just killed Come On. This was a fascinating one because what I really thought was interesting about this was how fairly similar, and I know everybody was like, oh, there's a little differences here and there. All things considered, fairly similar um, when it comes to uh, the circumstance around the campaign. Not that necessarily the games themselves. I know the games themselves are different, but it's just interesting to see uh, the, the the difference. And if nothing else, the, the fact that on GameFound, which traditionally funds less than Kickstarter, just because there's less people going there, that the Tainted Grail actually did better than the last two campaigns from Come On. Not even just the last one, but the last two combined weren't as much. And uh, it just goes to show that uh, Come On used to be the top dog. I mean, it really used to. And I used to nerd out all the time about their miniature quality and what they're doing with that. And I mean, like when I got hate, guys, I was like swooning 
right? I mean, Kamon was just such a step ahead of everybody else that when I would see stuff like Awakened Realms and I would see like their Edge Dawnfall stuff, I made a video called, you know, this is crap or whatever. How bad are the minis? And I put crap and put it right to there because I was like, what is this? How can this Dryad be anywhere close to anything I'm getting from Kamon? Kamon was just a tier above everybody else. They were doing fantastic work. They had Eric Lang making all these cool games and they were doing all these amazing minis. They were putting a bunch of production value into all this stuff and they were doing Blood Rage and they were doing Rising Sun and they were doing Hate and they were doing all this cool stuff. And I was, you know, like, oh my gosh, this is like amazing stuff. And they were on top of the world. They had done their um, their fantasy zombicide, which did extremely well. They were just the number one company to look at. I remember constantly talking to devs and getting these emails saying, "Hey, sorry, we delayed. We uh, but come on, just announced something that's close to what we're doing, so we're we're delaying." Right? Everybody avoided come on because come on was the 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 big one, right? That everybody was going to dump their their money into, and so you weren't going to fund if come on was doing it at the same time. This is back when companies did less Kickstarters per year as well, but so come on, did I think four, I think as well as one, one per quarter, but um, maybe not even that at that time. But either way, like that was, that was the big thing. And I constantly spoke to devs about, you know, well, well come on's doing this and so you might want to watch out and avoid this and blah, 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 blah. And that's just no longer the case anymore. There are, there's not only some strong competition, I think, honestly, they've been dethroned and they are no longer the top. They're certainly not the top at miniature quality. Their quality has actually gone down in components and in miniatures, uh, just through every, every aspect of it has lowered has diminished, whereas their previous games actually were better produced than they are now. Um, and honestly, a lot of them were better funded too. And so that's just kind of been a thing. A lot of it's just the shipping and the aspect and all that stuff. But the, again, you can compare to stuff even right now and how they're doing right now. So I think that was kind of the big thing, right? Is obviously it labels come on and it labels Awaken Realms, two very popular companies. So obviously people are interested in how those are interacting with each other. But I thought it was a very interesting subject to talk about as well. Now, the number one, the number one is come on manipulative liars this one was huge and again it's come on it's a very strong opinion that i'm providing and anytime somebody has a strong opinion it tends to come across rather strong right um so you know i don't shy away from uh my how i speak right i speak fairly casual and stuff like that and i don't shy away from uh saying how i feel and so if i feel like they're manipulative liars i'm gonna call them manipulative liars and you know uh, uh, people that are a little bit more reserved might might be like well i don't know if it's quite there quite that or but i mean that's it's, it's i call it how i see it uh and you know i think a lot of people resonate with it if you go to the comments on that video you see a lot of people um weren't just like oh my gosh come on video or can you come on anyone and do that they were responding to what i was saying and actually watching and actually the viewership on that video is quite good i can see how far people watch and how much percentage of the video that people watch and this one was just resonated with a lot of you guys because i think a lot of you guys are like me where you guys are just kind of frustrated with the 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 the, the lies and the manipulative practices and stuff like that i mean just look at the recent cancellation of um kingdom uh the kingdom come uh deliverance the board game right where they they were like oh hey well we actually need 1.5 million to fund and then people were like well then don't freaking lie to us about the number right i mean people are sick and tired of being lied to it sucks it's it, it, it it's just not good not only do you feel like you've been manipulated like you've you, you know you've been tricked um but it, it just it's disrespectful right it just shows a respect to the backers and so um you know kind of manipulating things and adjusting your pricing scheme to really skew towards one thing and then and then uh acting surprised by it just seems a little silly to me when nothing was obviously a surprise to them they knew right ahead of time what the business prospect of this game was so it looks like a cool game by the way like i'm not saying that of course and i never say it in there either i just this is come on not dune right <laughs> the company not the product on offer but yeah i think it just resonated with all you guys guys if there was a big thing that you guys are thinking might be in the next month's video where I go over the top 10, do let me know. There's some recent happenings that I'm sure are building up uh, as I've been covering them. I'll be sure to continue to cover this kind of stuff for you guys. And if there's anything you think I should take a look into, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you guys again real soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>